This is AS further pure mass. We are in unit four vectors, and we're looking at 411, um, the vector equation of a plane. So the previous video was the scalar form of the equation of the plane. This is now a vector form. Of um, so you know if you have two perpendicular vectors i and j, you can obtain the position vector of any other point in their plane by taking a number of i's, combine these with a number of j's. So the position vector of r is x i plus y j. You've known that for a while, obviously. It's like a coordinate plane. So we can you know, define any point here by a certain amount of x's and a certain amount of y's, so it's kind of any point on there. Now the two vectors you start with don't have to be unit vectors, so it doesn't have to be one on one, it could be really be any you know, amount, but you can just kind of fractions of each amount, that's okay. Nor do they have to be at right angles. As long as the two vectors, not as long as the neither of the vectors is zero, um, and so long as two of the vectors aren't parallel to each other, then you can still obtain the position vector of any point in the plane. If the two vectors are parallel, you're going to be able to get points along a straight line in the direction of these vectors. So instead of having you know, x's and y's, we could set it up you know, a certain amount of those and a certain amount of those. You can still get to any point anywhere then on the plane. Alright, so that's the way it's set up then here. So to get, get any point R, which lies in the same plane as A and B, you just need a number of A's together with a number of B's. That is, if R is the position vector of R, then R equals a certain number of A's and a certain number of B's. So a certain number of A's is lambda, and a certain number of B's then is mu, where lambda and mu are scalar parameters. This is all very well, but if you have a number of parallel planes, then the direction vectors A and B will be common to each of them. So that's our parallel planes there, and that's our problem with it. So if you have lambda A, and mu b, how do you know which parallel plane lambda a and mu b lie? Well, you don't, of course. However, if you can find the position vector of just one point which lies in your plane, then that plane can be defined uniquely. So if we have our point a, then we can define it uniquely. If a lies in the given plane, and its position vector a, and r is any point in the plane, and this position vector r and b and c are two non-parallel vectors in the plane, neither of which are zero, then r equals a plus a r. But since a r lies in the plane, it's a certain amount of b's and a certain amount of c's. We've changed the a's and b's there because we've already used a, so a r is that. Then lambda and mu are scalar parameters, so r equals a plus lambda b plus mu c. Effectively, if you have a plane somewhere here, we're trying to define it. Say we have zero here. Okay, so if we have a vector a that's on the plane, that gets us into there, and then we have our certain amount of b's and our certain amount of c's in to get us to any point in the plane, and that's then our definition of the plane. The vector of equation of a, so the vector equation of a plane where a is a position vector of a point in the plane, and b and c are non-parallel vectors in the plane, neither of which is zero, then is given by r equals a plus lambda b plus mu c or lambda and mu or scalar. So let's take a look at this one. Three points in the plane have coordinates a, b and c referred to an origin o. Find, not find, find the vector equation of the plane. So we're going to take our a to be then this point here and then say this is b and c. We need to define this. So how are we going to get it? We're going to go minus a plus b minus a plus c. So we're going to get our AB vector, which is of course going to be OB minus OA. So this, take away this, that gives us minus 1, 2, and 1. And then AC, there we go, from there we go, OC, take away. OA. This take away this gives me one. This take away this gives me zero. Does it? This looks different than what I have. Ah, uh, I think okay. Yes, yeah, go for zero. That's okay. And then two take away zero. Two take away zero. And it's going to be two, and that's okay. So really very little to do. Therefore, vector equation of plane 
is r equals a plus lambda b plus mu c so r equals our point a which is one minus one zero plus a certain amount of b's which is minus one two one plus a certain amount of c's which is one zero two and that's our vector equation then of the plane. Um, example two then find the Cartesian equation of the plane containing these three points here. So we have three points on it. It'll be very straightforward that just like our example one to get our vector equation of the plane. But if you're looking at the Cartesian equation of the plane, it's much better if we get the scalar form of it. So first of all, if we can set it up, so we're going to find our AB. And I'll explain what we're going to do then from here. So we're doing this, obviously take away this. So that's going to be 1, 0, minus 1. And then AC. This take away this is 1. This take away this is 1. This take away this and is minus 2. So what are we going to do? It's R dot N equals A dot N. I hope you remember that. And the n, of course, is the vector that's perpendicular to the plane. These two things that we've just worked out lie on the plane, because we a, b, and c all lie on the plane. So we've worked out the vector a, b. That lies in the plane. So if we find the cross product of those, that's going to give us a vector that's perpendicular to the plane. That's going to give us the n that we need. So we're going to do a, b, cross a, c. We're going to remember how to do that. So that equals i j k and we have one zero minus one 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 minus two um, and let's see what we're going to have here we're going to have i upon so yeah minus minus one so it's one minus j upon minus two plus 1, that's minus 1, plus k, 1, 0, so they're all just 1's, so our vector that is perpendicular to this particular plane is i plus j plus k, or if you want, hopefully you're able to see that okay, uh, 1, 1, 1, this is the normal to the plane. So that's what we've got. We've got our point one, one, one. So if we set it up, then we're going to get the slightly um, other version of that r minus a dot n. So we're going to go r dot n equals zero and we just need a point so I'm just going to pick the point B. <laughs> I'm not sure why but it's just what I have here in my notes. We just need a point that's on the plane. So I'm going to go for R take away two one zero dot one 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 because that's what we've just worked out equals zero and that is R dot one 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 equals multiplying this out and taking it over to the other side then it's going to be two one zero dot one 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 so we're going to have r dot one 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 equals two plus one plus zero so that's two plus one all right plus zero why not and that means r dot one 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 equals three that's our scalar form of the equation of the plane therefore the cartesian one it's very easy to work out from here one 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 that's that's one x plus one y plus one z equals three x plus y plus z equals 
3. So just note there, this example 2, even though it's come after the vector equation of the plane, that's not the best way to work it out. We work out the scalar form and do it this way here. That's a much easier way than getting the Cartesian equation of the plane.